The latest James Bond film and a gripping drama are available for viewing this weekend. In a review, No Time to Die and Mass, our film critics, Chuck Kaplinski and Pam Powell. Hello. How are you? We're fantastic. Uh, Chuck, I need to mention you're repping the uh, White Sox today. Every time there's a playoff game. Yep. Which yes. isn't all that often, but exactly. uh, this year we've, we've got one. Got to so. do it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's start talking movies. Who wants to talk No Time to Die? That, oh, that, oh, sorry, that would be sure. me, yeah, the one <laughs> who, uh, who actually likes big movies. Oh. Uh, no Time to Die it has been delayed quite a bit. Uh, it was in production for quite a long time. Then, of course, COVID hit, and uh, many people have been waiting for this a long time. And I can say that the wait has been worth it. There's only really two bad things about this film. It's about... 30 minutes too long, and the bad guy comes from central casting. But other than that, they knew that this was Daniel Craig's last time out as 007, and they pull out all the stops to impress us. And I'm not just talking about the stunts. The stunts are spectacular. The Bond films always start with that prologue before we get the credits, and the prologue in this film is no exception. It is astounding as far as the stunts they do and how they put that Aston Martin through its paces. But the stunts don't mean anything unless you care about the characters and you have an engaging story, and this one does. Bond is after a, a, a biological weapon, and it's an odd weapon because it keys in on a certain person or a certain race's DNA. So it can be very selective in how it takes people out, and it is lethal. And this thing falls in one hand after another, and it's thrilling and it's exciting. But the thing that's really important is Bond himself. He's suffering from a lot of emotional baggage because he's dealing with a relationship that has not uh, turned out the way he thought it would, and he has problems trusting people. So this one goes places, no bond has gone, and I'm telling you, you will be talking about the ending. I was paying attention, but I was on my phone looking up how old Daniel Craig was because I feel like he's a lot older than he really is. Yeah, I was going to tell you, be really careful with that. <laughs> well, no, I, I wasn't suggesting that. I just felt like he'd been Bond for a long time, and so he should be older than what he looks. Longer than anyone. Is it really? 15 wow. years, he has had it longer And than according anyone. to Google, he's 53. 53. Which yeah. I would have he's guessed a five or seven years older than that. But yeah. yep. All right. Well, now those we action movies might age you a little, little bit. bit. Right. Probably do. <laughs> okay, little bit. up next, Mass. Yes, talking about aging you a little bit, this is a harrowing tale. Um, not based on real life, but definitely based in reality in some way. If you've never heard of the, the name Fran Kranz, you're going to. This is a first-time writer and director. He's got a heavy resume with acting, but this is his first time behind the camera and in writing the screenplay. About two couples who come together in this church basement or church con uh, conference room to talk about a tragedy that has occurred. Both of them have lost children in a mass school shooting. And one person, one couple is the parent of the shooter and the other couple are the parents of one of the victims. This it takes my breath away just even talking about it because these are harrowing circumstances. This is raw and brutal, and it definitely hits home and gives you insight into both sides of this very gripping story. The performances are out of this world. You will never find an ensemble cast that relays this information and gives you this kind of sympathy and empathy almost as you're walking in their shoes, you're sitting next to them as you're watching this tale unfold. Um, incredible screenwriting, succinct, smart, and this is not the last film that Fran Kranz is going to write or direct, I hope. All right. Speaking of uh, other movies, you're going to be talking about Lamb tomorrow morning yes, on the tomorrow morning, morning show. Yes, tomorrow morning on the morning show, I'm going to be reviewing Lamb. The oddest, strangest movie of the year. I am not exaggerating <laughs> He's at all. Not. What did you say about lamb chops? Oh, I'm never going to eat them again. Never going to eat lamb chops. Ever. Yeah. 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 Who is that? Uh, it's a Swedish film, uh, oh. so you probably okay. don't, like don't know anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, then you guys have a giveaway? We do. We've got two giveaways coming up. Maya and the Three on Netflix coming up. We're going to give away a bunch of codes for that. And then also Dune, Dune, which everybody's been waiting for. We're giving away codes for that. Take a look at Real Talk with Chuck and Pam on Facebook to get more information as to how to... Uh, Got to win. Right. Okay, Good well, stuff. thanks so much. We'll Thank connect you. you with all of that information on our website. Uh, there's a look at the uh, Facebook page and website. Just go to ciliving.tv.